Oh, that took forever. <laughs> I got the baby to sleep. Good. Because it's time to watch Doctor Who! The new episode! Yay! In my life, it appears that everything that's cool from England generally gets presented to me from my lovely wife. In fact, actually, when we were first dating, like, uh, I think I mentioned to her that I hadn't read the Harry Potter books. This is yet. true. This is a true story. Yeah, and I. He wasn't, that gonna I wasn't read going one. to read them. So while he played video games, I read out loud Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone to him. Mm. And Harry Potter and. Did I? The first yeah, two? Yeah, the first two. <laughs> this is how dedicated I was to the <laughs> cause of converting Blair. For the record, however, I did read third book and the fourth and the book rest, and the rest all the by himself he all learned to read own. which i had a feel similar like relationship with doctor who and mary got into the the new reboots and i think she you watched the entire first season and then told me i needed to watch it and i remember i remember you telling me just get through the first couple episodes and you'll be fine and i got to the the second the first one with the farting oh, the, 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 farting the farting aliens, aliens. Ah, anyone it's just Anyone that makes it past that episode and still keeps going, I think you're going to be fine. So those of you that have not seen Doctor Who, there's going to be a few spoilers here, but I will I will echo what my wife said to me back then and say it exactly to you. Get through Christopher Eccleston and get to the Empty Child episode. You get to the Empty Child episode, it's solid gold after that for the most part. So but anyway, um, we kind of had this little discussion um, today, especially with the season nine um, starting, yeah, the second season of Peter Capaldi and um, as a doctor and Clara and everything like that. We kind of had a little bit of a discussion about who our doctor was, and that was an easy one for me for a long time. I mean, my doctor was uh, was uh, the tenth doctor, but you know it's kind of shifted a little bit. But um, anyway, part of it we we thought it was kind of really interesting was how um, we kind of how we self-identify with the doctor and the companion. So. You know, and obviously there's some gender issues that we could talk about with that. But um, I find myself gravitating toward the doctor and um, self-identifying with that. However, you, I like, I love the doctor, and he's fantastic. And David Tennant, the tenth Doctor, is my favorite. But more so because of Donna. To me, Donna is the best, the best companion. Which is funny because the first episode that she was in, the Runaway Bride. I did not like her at all. I thought she was annoying and she was irritating and and then I saw her in Partners in Crime with the Adipose and I'm like, oh actually she's really cool. And at the end when when he finally does invite her to come with him and to you know, to travel with him and everything, that was the beginning of like I don't know, when they kind of defined what their relationship was, that I'm just like, Oh, I'm gonna really like her because I I couldn't stand Martha, and it wasn't so you know, because I, I didn't like her. She was fine. It's because I didn't, I couldn't handle the, oh, I'm in love with the doctor, and he's not in love with me because he wants Rose. And she had some really good episodes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the Family of Blood mm -hmm. episode and the, the other one that came after that, I loved that. I thought that was fantastic, but Martha... No, I just love him to bits and he's never going to see me that way. I'm like, just give it a rest. Just stop. But then Donna being, they were they were amazing partners. And their, their chemistry, even though it was a plutonic chemistry, was amazing. And some of their episodes, I, I mean, the one with the adipose was great. Um, the unicorn and the wasp was really good. I just really liked, I love Donna. I love her. I love her personality. Yeah. She can be my BFF. I have really strong feeling. I, I hated Rose. And maybe it's because of Christopher Christopher Eccleston. Like, I had really I had a hard time with him as the doctor, and I was really happy when he left. Because, I mean... Uh, Blair has a hard time with Christopher Eccleston in a few things. Heroes yeah, kind of ruined him. He was awful in Heroes. And... As Claude Rains, the Invisible Man. I mean, he was, he was terrible in that. He was also terrible in a lot of stuff. I didn't like him in <laughs> Thor. I mean, I, you could barely even tell okay, it was him, well, him but okay. you still was awful. This is an episode Thor. for another day. The yeah. second Thor was was inferior to the first mm, one, but I think it was because of 
Kenneth be, Branagh not being there. But uh, that's, again, we yeah, can talk about that another More time. British people and their Britishiness. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but so so I had a really hard time with Rose, and I, in I, in my opinion, and you know Alexis Ulrich, she, she has her opinion too, and we've kind of had this out a couple times, and we'll have to have you on one of these times. But anyway, when it comes to the the companions, my least favorite companion is Rose. Even more so than Martha. Yeah, I didn't mind Martha. I thought Martha okay. was okay. I well, hated well, and I hated the thing with like her. You know, she. Kind of had, kind of like Christopher Eccleston, and then Christopher Eccleston was like, you know, the Ninth Doctor was like giving people his breath for gifts and stuff, and he was terrible, and the writing was not that good. And then, and then, and then all of a sudden, David Tennant comes on, and he's like got nice hair and a big long, you know, jacket and Converse All Stars, and she's like, ooh, that's my guy. And like I, and then like when they, when they kind of separated i guess and martha came along i kind of felt like there was a little bit of less tension like you know relationship tension and i felt you th you think that martha was pining over which she probably was but like for me i didn't mind martha and i didn't mind donna i liked donna a lot too um and i don't like the i don't mind the pawns either okay the pawns are good rory too. is fantastic i like rory amy i have a hard time with too for similar just because she has a boyfriend or husband too later and, but she kind of loves her son-in-law weird she, <laughs> she was just she was wishy-washy with rory and i didn't yeah. i didn't like that but rory's great rory's great so if we go down the list rose is on the bottom still for me and you have martha well, where do you put rose if we're starting from the bottom okay, you gotta include clara Mar Martha, Martha, and Amy are at the bottom, for me. Amy, really? That bad? yes, I don't like Amy. I don't like Amy. <laughs> and you even saw her at a comic con. You should have told her how you felt. <laughs> in I the liked her in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, you met her at a in a bathroom at a Salt Lake Comic Con, and then you, you hate her. You met, hate her. Met is a little bit <laughs> too intimate of a word. Mm -hmm. It was more like. Saw. You saw. <laughs> but you liked David Tennant. I like David Tennant. Now what I like about? Anna. Did you like him? Because like I think part well, of Christopher okay. Eccleston's problem was that he had some really poor. He had poor, poor episodes. He yeah. He was a victim of some bad writing. Um, David Tennant had a lot more. He he had he had a lot more good episodes. Um, a lot of which were written by Stephen Moffat. Um, but also just he was more charismatic. He had enthusiasm, and he had a lot more fun without being childish, which I think, as good as Matt Smith was, he did come across to me as childish. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And goofy. And, like, David Tennant could be fun and silly, but he, was, he wasn't he was a dork. <laughs> well, like, well, David Tennant always felt like when there was a problem, he had... He just, he turned it on, and he was clever, and... Right, and he knew, he knew the solution to it, and... He knew what he was going to do. You didn't know as a viewer what, what was going to happen, but he always had a plan. And it seems like Matt Smith didn't really have a plan. Yeah, and he, it would come together of, the last second. He knew yeah. that he could figure it out, mm -hmm. and he knew, I know this is going to work out for me, Right. but he still was just kind of, I'm just going to keep doing stuff, and yeah. this is going to work out. Bow ties are awesome. Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool, sorry. I completely misquoted him. But no, no, I, I, I liked, I liked Matt Smith's episodes. I thought the episodes were he had great. good episodes, and I thought he did a good job in that different role. But like with, with David Tennant, though, when David Tennant stopped being the Doctor, like I can think of, I can think of uh, off the top of my head, I can, th well, I think of six movies that I've cried in, six TV shows. I can think of two that I got kind of teary eyed in. One was the season fin series finale of Lost, and then two was when, that one. When David Tennant, yeah, I don't want to go. Yeah, that was that was that was emotional. It was, and then when Matt Smith left, I was like, well, on to the next we'll one. See. But he did have some good episodes. No, he though. did have some and really his, good. My ones, favorite but I Christmas. Just isn't attached to him, my well. favorite Christmas special was the one with Matt Smith and Michael Gambon. That one was really good. Mm -hmm. I that one too. Yeah. But um, the passing of the torch, though, between 
um, you know, Russell T. Davies and to Stephen Moffat, who became the showrunner with um, with Matt Smith's run. Um, he had a lot better episodes, but I a lot, you know, David Tennant was was kind of my guy for a while. But then then came Peter Capaldi, and I want to kind of explain my my relationship with Capaldi because Capaldi like. He was the old guy. He and he's is the old guy. Hard to understand sometimes. He is hard to that, understand. That Scottish accent. <laughs> yeah. A couple of the episodes into it, I couldn't figure out if I liked him or if I didn't like him because I, he didn't seem to be the doctor to me. Like all the, the doctors were, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I felt like the doctors was always it was, the doctor was the guy that figured every problem out. That, that's what a doctor does. Like you know, a doctor you go and find out if you're sick, and a doctor tells you if you're sick. Looking at me like I'm weird. No, I'm just... <laughs> okay. I, I guess I, 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 every episode of with Tennant, with Matt Smith, I mean, Matt Smith figured things out at the end. David Tennant seemed to always know. Peter Capaldi was... Or, I mean, uh, Christopher Eccleston was like... Again, giving people his breath for gifts and oddly weird, quirky... But he seemed to, too, have like a plan. He was... <laughs> but but like he had a plan, and then with, with Capaldi, it it felt like he he knew what was the right thing to do, but didn't want to really do anything about it. And until the was the second episode of the season of the series nine, where um, he was presented with the opportunity of either saving somebody's life or finding out, or getting deeper into the consciousness, his own consciousness, and that of the dog. And it, he for the first time in all the episodes I ever watched, he let someone die. And that really struck me as odd. Like, how does the doctor... How does a doctor let someone die? And then we get a little bit further even down into the... Um, the Mummy on the Orient Express episode where there was the mummy murderer and every single person was... You know, where there, were, there was a clock and people were dying every you know minute or so. And... You know, he wasn't trying to save him. He was trying to get the people that he knew were going to die to give more information so they could save the next person, not to save that one. Um, but then we got into the... Uh, it was the Kill, uh, Kill the Moon episode. And this is where the moon... Turns out the moon is a... a an egg. Egg, an egg for spider-type creatures. and um, That the moon was going to hatch. And um, when it hatched... Or, they. Clara had the opportunity to decide whether they were going to blow the moon up and kill the spider inside or um, let it hatch. And at that moment, I thought, okay, the, the, the doctor's going to have a plan, and the doctor leaves. Capaldi gets in, his, gets in the TARDIS and goes away. And that, when that episode happened, I thought, I'm not sure... This, this isn't the doctor. This isn't what the, doc, the doctor does. And then later he said something that I thought was really, really important. When, uh, as he was leaving, he said, Some, por some, some decisions, decisions are too important, are too not, important to not to do on your own. And he left uh, Clara there to make her own decision and make the decision. And um, as I've, I re watched that episode, that whole episode kind of mirrors my relationship with Peter Capaldi and why he's kind of my current favorite. Um, because for me, He's helping the companion be more than just a tag along, be there with him. He, he, the companion is now actively involved in make not just like helping him make decisions, but actually making decisions with him. Mm -hmm. And he's becoming more of a teacher to and giving Clara autonomy uh -huh. and, and think, yeah. And I think that that's, that's so much more of what education needs. I think is somebody that's going to let somebody make a decision then later Capaldi says to the doctor says to her that he trusted her to make the right decision she was so mad at him so mad at him that he left her in that time but um, but it was the best thing for her and it was the best thing for for everybody it's the best thing for everybody that's in those types of decisions is to be given the not just the autonomy but the trust would you let me down then why are you helping me Do you think I care for you so little that betraying me would make a difference? Stop it with the eyes. Don't do that with the eyes. How do you do that anyway? It's like they inflate. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's um, too often, not just education, but parenting, but in, in everything that we don't trust. We, 
we don't think that people are going to make the right decision, so we force that decision. And this goes back into even like Captain America 2 discussion. Mm -hmm. To me, that's why I love Capaldi, because now I kind of see where he is. I see him as a doctor, and that's the kind of person that I kind of want to be as a teacher, mentor, leader, um, you know, parent. Um, I want to be the person that will teach and then when the moment comes for them to make the decision don't make the decision for them mm -hmm. help them let them and trust them to make great decisions for lack of a better phrase teach them great, great principles and let them govern themselves and that's what Capaldi is to me that's why I, he's become my favorite so what we would like to hear from you guys in the comments below is who's your favorite doctor and why and if you even want to go back into the old old ones uh, Baker and, and we didn't talk about Clara really much as mm -hmm. a companion. I think she's fine. I like mm -hmm. her. I I think she's just fine. I, I I liked I liked a little bit of her conflict with him that she she kind of almost had that like romantic relationship with Matt Smith to a certain degree. And then again, interesting so thing interesting thing is when she starts dating Danny Pink. And I think that's really interesting too, because if anybody knows anything about like motivation and those type of things, Daniel Pink is okay. a guy that wrote a book called Drive, and it's about it's kind of a lot of the same stuff that Capaldi's doing, which is you know kind of giving people autonomy to make good decisions and they become better learners. Um, he wrote a great book, and his name's Daniel Pink, and then we have Danny Pink in the book. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but it's really kind of interesting that it's there. So. Mm -hmm. Well, before we go, we want to do one quick game of Hold the Bacon. Shall we check to see who we got? So we're going to check our... And if you haven't already clicked like on our Facebook page, please do. Alright, so for our Hold the Bacon tonight, we are doing Sam Elliott to River Phoenix, which was suggested by a family member of ours mm. because he knows our children's names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, are we ready? Alright. Okay, so la wait, wait, last time we oh. did it, we did it in three minutes flat. So we, we're can, gonna, we can do this. And we and did it in seven six steps. steps. Six. It was six movies. If we're counting steps, it was six movies. Seven actors and six movies. Okay. So we're going to try to do... We're going to try to beat our score. Sam Elliott to River Phoenix. Okay. okay. If we go backwards, River Phoenix, River Phoenix was in Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Harrison Ford. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to see if Harrison Ford is in any movies with Jeff Daniels, or is he in something with uh, what's his name? Um, I mean, is, is he in anything with Val Kilmer? Val Kilmer or is he Kurt in Russell? With yeah, he's in Tombstone. Oh, he's in Tombstone. Sam Elliott's in Tombstone. He's one of the Earp brothers. Oh. Okay, well, if Sam Elliott is in Tombstone with Val Kilmer, who is in Batman Forever with Tommy Lee Jones, who's in The Fugitive with, with Harrison, Harrison Ford. Ford, who was in Indiana Jones with... River Phoenix. River Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Nice. That was easy. <laughs> All right, so again, in the comments below, let us know... Uh, which ones we should do next, you know, which hold the bacon game. Also, let us know who your favorite doctor is. We'd love to know who your favorite doctor is and tell us why. Especially if you're into, like, the older Who. We'd love to hear that because I would love to go back and watch some of the older Yeah, doctor we, and we don't know where, so. there's so many, we don't really know where to start. Yeah. So let us know where we should go. All right, so also click here to subscribe. Boo. Bing. And click here if you want to check out our last episode. And... Let us go to sleep just like our kids are asleep. Good night.